With the base coats out of the way, I'll show you how to paint bigger miniatures in less time with easy techniques. Starting off with some dry brushing using a cheap makeup brush. I make sure to work the paint into the brush from all sides, before removing any excess on a paper towel. From here I'll go back and forth very lightly in the opposite direction of the detail I'm painting. As you can see, the model has very defined muscle fibers. Over on the chest, they'll follow an horizontal line, so I'll be moving my brush from top to bottom. So this way, the bristles will have less of a chance of getting into the recesses. As I move on to the shoulder, the direction will change. Since the fibers are now perpendicular, I'll move my brush from side to side. My aim today is to keep the paint job as easy and with the least amount of paints as possible, so to better showcase how much oils can lift up a model. When it comes to the colors I've used so far, a brown was used for the bones, fur and cloth, and a mix of it and light blue for the skin. Pure light blue was used to dry brush the skin and on the brown I just mixed a pinch of white. Having gone over all the model once, I'll do some further dry brushing mixing a bit more white but this time I'll be removing even more paint from my brush. While it will look like nothing's coming off, the effect will take shape on the model as the protruding details slowly pick up bits of paint. Do remember to have a light hand and be gentle, or you might end up scraping the previous layers off. Also, while previously I went over the whole model, this time I'll focus on what I want to bring more attention to, independent of what my major in light source would tell me. So in other words, whichever part of the model I find the coolest. With the model base coated and dry brushed, I can now move on to the oils. But before that, if you like this model, you can get it from Mammoth Factory's June release, Frostwilds 2, alongside more than 20 other models and a D&D 5e adventure. Check out the description for links to their social media, Patreon and my mini factory page. If I were to give you a recipe to dilute your oil paints, I'd be lying to you. Different brands and different colors will yield different results. So when mixing oil paints, it's all about trial and error till you get the hang of it. Though their benefit lies in the fact that their slow drying time provides a long work time. And through the use of white spirits, anything can be cleaned up if any mistakes are made. For this model, however, I won't be looking at classic oil washing, but something a bit different which recurring viewers of the channel might have seen already. Like you saw, I dry brushed my model to a very pale tone. And for the oils, while I'm adding some white spirits to thin them, I'm still applying them quite thick. My aim is to use this initial layer to thin the very light surfaces I created through dry brushing, and afterwards do the more commonly seen cleanup but with an extra layer of possibilities. After covering the whole model, I'll leave it to the side for around an hour. This will vary between colors and brands of paints. But my aim is to give time for the white spirits to evaporate and for the oils to get an initial grip or tinting over the model. With a makeup sponge, I'll very gently go over the whole model, removing the oils from the raised surfaces and leaving behind some very defined shadows. Yet there will still be a thin layer of oils and pigments left behind which will give my pale highlights its tinting, and which I'll work on further in the next step. When it comes to the skin, the tinting this indigo oil pin created was much stronger than the brown, something for me to have in mind next time I work with this color. Still, I don't dislike the look, and it'll give me some more space to do some further cleanup on the next step. Quick note that I cut my makeup sponges in different shapes and sizes to better go around different parts of the models, like you see here when working around the armpit. 
and this is how the model was looking after just doing some simple cleanup with the makeup sponges alone. Soaking a Q-tip in white spirits but removing the excess on a paper towel, I'll continue cleaning the oils. This will work the same way as the sponge, but providing me with more control. And the addition of the white spirits will allow me to remove that thin layer of oils I previously mentioned, which on the brown was not too strong, but on the indigo it gave me a new layer of highlights I couldn't cover. So apart from the raised surfaces with a layer of tinting over them, now I have access to a new highlight I can clean the oil from, to get close to the initial pale highlights I began with and one pass with the QT probably won't remove all the oil, so I can modulate how much I wish to remove to push my highlights even further. This is a way of working with oils I find more effective when working on big models. Instead of highlighting and blending, I'm working the other way around, uncovering the highlights present from the beginning. Sometimes, however, projects don't go as planned. Initially, I wanted to keep this super simple and let the oils provide me with the depth and definition, but I couldn't stand the fur and bones being the same color. So I took a step back and applied some black oil to the fur in an effort to tint it darker, and remove the paint in a different way, through a brush soaked in white spirits instead. To learn more about this way of removing paint, check out my old guide which I'll link above. And to be honest, the fur didn't end up as I'd like, but when it comes to the bones and the skin, I think the results speak for themselves. From here, I could leave the model as it is or enhance the highlights with acrylics. I chose only to add a bit of dry brushing to the bones once again to differentiate it from the fur a bit more. Here is how the model ended up looking after just oils and dry brushing. Since I had the chance, I decided to add some blood effects to the open stomach. I initially diluted some blood for the blood cut technical paint with water, poured it into the cavity and let it flow naturally. Using an old brush, I extended the splatters along the base as if it were leaving a trail. Once it was dry, the dilution with water created a nice wash-like effect which doesn't affect the glossiness of the technical paint. But still, I went around adding some touch-ups here and there with the paint undiluted. An old bit of brush like this one is perfect for these random patterns and splatters. And here is the end result. Thank you Mammoth Factory for providing the model. Remember to check them out through the links in the description. And as always, special thanks to my patrons Caeb, Cedric, I like Samosas and Moradin. Feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments and I'll get to them shortly. But for now, thank you for watching.